Christian from Berlin. Um, I look terrible, I know I just slept two hours this night. And, um, but that means, uh, that shows you how much I care for you. If I look like this shit and still go globally on video. Anyway, so the, uh, we have uh, something serious to talk about um, and that's why I do it. Because um, uh, some of you uh, wrote to me, these trends are killing me. And see, you're my community and in my community nobody gets killed. I take care of you. Nobody gets killed here. You are safe. As long as you subscribe, <laughs> subscribe, it's a lifesaver. So, Trilling, um, we start. Um, I have a certain procedure when I do it here. And I promise you, I have a 73 year old. I have a 65 year old. I have, of course, I have an 11 year old and I have a 20 year old. And I all show them trills. It is possible. You need, you need a strong hand to guide you. And this is really um, uh, tough over video. But I give it a try, okay? So, first of all, this is your hand. And, uh, no, actually it's my hand, but imagine it's your hand. Uh, and you, you do this. Can you do this? Can you shake your hand like this? Yes? Like this? Or can you do, um, can you see this? Um, like the surface, this here. And uh, part of this is also, if, if you see when I move, you see, it, it goes up to here. Um, when you can do this, you can trill. So you approach the plastic, the keyboard, the ivory. No, if it's ivory, I sue you. It's forbidden. So it's hopefully plastic. So um, let's take the octave first. It's the hardest bit. Those are easier. Hovering meaning uh, don't put pressure on the keys. Just as soon as you as you are kissing the keys with your fingertips, you stop. That's your position. And it bloody stays there, this position. So now you um, now you do this on the sur on the plastic surface. Um, and then what we do is we still go there and we do this hovering in the air, and you go down slightly and very carefully. Ah, so there is a certain point where note resounds. Hmm. Let's call it um, the contact point. The contact point. There is a point where there's sound. And there's also a point on this one where there's, where there's sound. And, uh, and then um, you go, you take this and you very slightly go down. Ah, there's no coming. Because, uh, yeah, it is not much weight and you over overestimate the weight of your keys. It's here and it's muscle tension. Most of the times the piano are not as different as all or so many people think. I know because I play on the same grand piano and or same grand pianos on, in very diff at very different times, at stressed out times, at insecure times, at good times. And it felt like there was a ton of uh, uh, like a, a difference in weight. And I know this for sure and I explored it. Um, there's a lot going on here. So, um, uh, so we, we are still here and you're sinking down and you, you feel this. You can give the, um, the fingertips a little tension. Yeah, a little, a little bit stiffness in the fingertips. But this has to be uh, stay loose. And this is very important. One of the uh, uh, most common mistakes is, uh, I say, take care of your fourth finger. And then they come to the position with the fourth finger, and this is good, and this goes hard, and this goes, and the shoulder goes up, and the foot goes in the air. Uh, no, no, sometimes. Um, uh, so it's getting far too much. Tense tension for just a small finger, and that's a psyche. 
you know, and it's body awareness also. Make your finger, uh, the fourth finger, loose. And you're putting so much effort on making this loose that your shoulder goes up. Or you uh, I can observe my students, sometimes it's like, I say, are you loose? Are you okay? Are you relaxed? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> you have to be aware of stuff. So, that means you get a little bit of tension in the, in the fingertips, uh, but this stays, the rest of the hand stays relaxed, and then you go down. And um, the, the trick now is that you find, uh, that you get a feeling of the uh, contact point. And once you have the contact point, the motion of uh, the trembling is just half a millimeter. At the, um, uh, and that way you get your trilling. And then you take your hand off because you're not used to it and it will get tense. And then you start a little bit late, take a deep breath, relax, relax, really relax. So, yeah, I'm relaxed. It happens often. So, and then um, if you go down and it, it's irregular in the beginning, who cares? The main thing is stay loose, stay relaxed. It doesn't matter what it sounds and it doesn't matter even if you play an octave, like Sometimes I start from the beginning, really random. Do any notes, it does not matter. I just like play on the plastic and play on this plastic. And then you become more precise and now play these two notes, but with the same attitude. Yeah, this is like, yeah, good, it's excellent. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good first step. Arbitrary, no stress, no task. No C and C sharp and uh, like, yeah. Oh no, now take the uh, random, we, um, Take a limit to the randomness, we say like in between this scale and then you go, ah, oh, it's still easy. Okay, now why don't you just hit either those or those and then, ah, oh, I'm relaxed, I can make mistakes. So and now, and then I take those two fingers from the people and put it, ah, oh, okay. What about just these two? I can trade it, I can trade it. It always goes like that. Um, octaves we have. Now, these two. Um, can you do this? Or with the two fingers here? Actually, I would suggest one and three is really good for trilling. If you don't do octaves, one and three is good. Yeah? These are strong, strong fingers. The first three are strong fingers. They're the raptor fingers, like. So, um, uh, <laughs> you take those two, two fingers, or one or three, and do the same. And this is, this is easier because this is, uh, yeah, because this is already ten, uh, stretching your hand a little, you know, the octaves are already doing something that is not natural for your hand, and, but this is natural. So you come down, or you do this, then you do this, or, yeah, then you can trill. You just have to overcome the psychology that it's a piano and uh, that it's, it's a heavy piano. No, it's not. So. Um, you take this here and uh, then you do like this. You sink down slowly. But, I mean, if I'm teaching this here, I'm really authoritarian. I say, stay loose! You're getting your shoulders! And I say, I really have to make them aware. Put your back and stay relaxed. And, uh. So, because that's what a teacher is for. And that's sometimes what a teacher is indispensable for. So, and you go down, you're sinking down, and you're checking out the pressure points. Ah, ah, there is. And it doesn't matter that it's irregular, it does not matter, it only matters that you stay loose, and then you have it very soon. I know it. Now, I have the reputation of being quite an effective and mean teacher because I, I teach them very fast how they can do it. And there's a trick for this also. Um, what happens is, um, and then they start to trill. They forget about the left hand and it's because the brain um, halves are connected, unfortunately. Unfortunately for piano playing, otherwise it's quite useful.
And um, so uh, they, they think uh, I must trill and my attention lies here and my concentration all oh, trilling, trilling, trilling. And I told you in many, my, my, many of my videos, the first uh, thing that is uh, cheating on you, uh, except your girlfriend, is your left hand. Uh, it goes, it leaves the rhythm first. So, but the thing is, if you do something arbitrary, like waving, for example, like this, so having no task, but doing something like waving, you know, can you do this? Bye, Grandma. Bye. Bye, Grandma. Try it. And, um, and then, let's say, you do um, this waving, and uh, you say, but try it, and try not to leave your left hand out of sight. Out of sight means out of ear. Um, it basically means, um, I presume many of you have children. Uh, I have a son too, and um, I remember when, when I go with my son somewhere for a walk or um, and I'm meeting somebody in the park and I talk to this person and my son, let's say he was five years old, I'm always aware where he is. He's showing me, ah, so how are you today? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and I still know from the angle of my eye where my son is and I know he's right, I can hear him behind me. He's never in danger because my leash is with him. I can concentrate on, on you and I still know my son is a... Uh, don't you fucking do that! So I can go on. <laughs> so, um, and this is your left hand. Your left hand is your child. Don't leave it alone. Don't. And I, I stand here when I teach this. Uh, I do this. I say, don't leave that alone. Your left hand. Because that's, you have to put pressure. Because... The students just do it. And then I go to this, to this side. And they're trying to trill here. And I touch this hand. I, as soon as a half, half a second out of, uh, out of rhythm, and he's playing like a, and he's, I hit it. And it makes, it aware, makes me aware. Yeah, oh, it's my hand. <laughs> it's my left hand going berserk. And, or I touch it lightly. So, uh, and then I go on. Just wave your hand. But, as long, um, but you must continue with the left hand. This is your son. This is McDonald's. Okay, decide. And um, so, that me, uh, in that moment, they learn that they can shift um, concentration and, uh, uh, and leave about 70% or 80% with the left hand. And I say, don't do anything meaningful with the right hand, just hit the keyboard, okay? Like. And uh, that's the start. Going on, doing something almost arbitrary, like almost arbitrary. And then we take this arbitrariness down. We, I, we pres make it more precise. Yeah, that's good. Now do arbitrary not like this, do arbitrary like this. We are approaching trilling. So I said, okay, now do this, and you bloody do this, and but you keep on doing here something. I call it ants hive. Uh, for the non-English speaker, like uh, ants, the little animals, the big pile. It's called ants hive. This is my metaphor for this. Uh, ants. Yes, ants. So what? Ants having a party. My leash is there, it's my son, but the ants are having a party. So, and then I say, party, come on, get, get a bit, uh, and also, very important, play loudly the left hand. The louder play and stay loud. And that's what I often have to hear. Stay loud! Because when it goes down, it's, it's gonna cheat you when, they, when it gets silent. And when you have this, you are this close to trilling with the left hand. We are very close now.
Now I say, okay, put the ant hive, um, make a smaller ant hive, make it a, a one up taste, is that fine? So, yes, yeah, sure, of course. Ant hive. It's still not music, it's not music, so no stress necessary. Ooh. And then I say, oh, we'll make it, the ants have a bit smaller. No problem. Just within this, but there you can play anything, okay? And then in the end we say, okay, now it's, we have an ants hive. You go, yeah, you take these three, two notes. It's still a small ants hive. And we got it, we are there. That's the trick. That's the trick. So coming from nothingness to trilling, from arbitrary ants hive to smaller ants hive, no music, no stress, to two notes. And then. And it's again about those pressure points a little bit, but you will manage. Looseness and not music in the in the start. And the music comes after the looseness. So that was my little video on trilling and um, let me know if you made it over video. It's the first time I'm teaching this over video and uh, I wish you would be all here. And I would bring it to you in no time. Yeah, move to Berlin and uh, then visit me. Bye.